Within your lifetime, one company promised that woolly mammoths, one of the most significant human-caused extinctions, will soon return to walk our planet. And it's all thanks to gene editing. This may sound like science fiction, but this is the mission of Colossal, a bioscience company doing pioneering work in biogenetics and genetic modification. Colossal's work is actually a new spin on very old technology. Humans have relied on genetic modification for thousands of years. Today, however, new breakthroughs in biotech have given scientists the seemingly unthinkable ability to actively shape life on this planet. Modern techniques of genetic modification are a new frontier for science, and the field is quickly becoming a new playground for those eager to push the limits of the possible. But why bring back the mammoth? Is resurrecting this furry relic just a publicity stunt? What are the consequences of meddling with the DNA of animals, of plants, of humans? These are questions that no one can answer definitively. But in this video, we're going to show you some of the unanticipated upsides. We're going to show you how tinkering with the genetics of mammoths and mosquitoes could potentially heal us, feed us, and dramatically extend our lives. We see the practice of applied genetics every day, usually at the supermarket. I mean, this is what corn used to look like before humans started to selectively harvest and replant the best seeds. We learned to graft crops to produce bigger fruits, larger harvests, and to be more resilient to extreme conditions. It's actually the reason why anyone even likes Brussels sprouts these days. Selectively breeding and pollinating through the 90s till these little vegetables weren't so bitter anymore. We selectively bred bananas to what they are now, a single variety called the Cavendish, which can't reproduce on their own and require grafting and offcuts. And sure, they're delicious, but now we're finding that they're highly vulnerable because of the lack of genetic diversity. Traditional methods require a lot of patience, waiting years to witness results. Now with tools, adding genetic information across species, alterations are more strategic and intentional, amplifying or eliminating traits to make our food more nutritious, safer, and abundant. The potential from new, more accessible scientific breakthroughs mean we're seeing so much more than just better Brussels sprouts. Back to mammoths. Colossal, a bioscience company, recently announced they were on track to de-extinct not only the mammoth, but also the dodo bird and the Tasmanian tiger. Using samples from museums and specimens in the ice, Colossal has raised $225 million from investors to fund a project that sounds almost identical to what Mr. DNA described in Jurassic Park. The extinct DNA samples have massive gaps in the code, and they're completed with DNA snippets taken from modern day animals with similar genetics. This isn't just hypothetical. Just this year, a food lab recreated mammoth meat, cultured and grown to create a mammoth meatball. For display purposes only, of course. You couldn't eat it. The company stated that nobody knew what eating the meat would do, if it would trigger unknown allergies or worse. Genetic science is at the edge here, dipping a toe into murky waters. And as Jeff Goldblum quoted in Jurassic Park, scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. The scientists working in this field make various claims about why they're interested in de-extinction, but at the top of the list is scientific breakthroughs. As many of its investors believe, trying something no one has done before could lead to genetic modifications that change the world. In leading the way, these genetic revolutions is the bacteria-powered gene editing tool CRISPR, or Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats of Genetic Information. Basically, CRISPR is repurposing a bacterial reaction and using little nucleus as molecular scale scalpels. It was discovered in bacterial immune systems where they cut the DNA of invading viruses to disable them. Estimates say that because of CRISPR's incredible effectiveness, the biotech industry could be worth $2 trillion in five years. By using these types of gene tools, we've made life considerably better for much of the world. We can create strains of eggplants that thrive without insecticides in Bangladeshi fields where crop shortages can be fatal. We can grow beta-carotene-laced golden rice that provides nutrients in places like the Philippines where vitamin A deficiencies pose real health risks. It all sounds very simple. Change a few traits here, snip a gene there. But the reality is that nature is complex. One small change possibly causing ripples that we can't possibly foresee. 
With the power to alter living cells, we need safeguards around our experiments and thorough research before we can move on to the next problem. Unfortunately, humanity's track record on this is poor. One of Colossal's intentions with reviving the mammoth is to repopulate the tundra and boreal forests of the Arctic with the new woolly mammoths, saying they can strengthen the local plant life with the migration patterns and dietary habits of the beast, possibly reversing some of the damage done by their absence. There could definitely be irreversible changes. Let's look at the Asian kutsu vine. Introduced to help soil erosion in America's south, it grew quickly at over a foot per day and overtook fields, forests, and local fauna without remorse. All it took was one British hunter to release rabbits on his Australian farm because he liked hunting them to cause a near collapse of the entire ecosystem from millions of animals that faced no natural predators. Because sailors didn't want to carry goats for long voyages, they left them on the Galapagos Islands, where the unchecked population ate through entire forests, the main food source for those famous giant tortoises. And those are known organisms we couldn't handle. When geneticists talk about bringing back extinct animals or even playing around with human genomes, it brings up serious questions. Like how reliable is our ability to dabble with DNA? And why bother with hairy elephants or flightless birds? Genetic tinkering has the potential to cause much more impact than goats on the Galapagos, but we need to figure out a way forward. Because by using CRISPR technology to do more than grow better food, we can really tackle some of humanity's impending challenges. Many experts have estimated that mosquitoes are responsible for up to 50% of human deaths, ever. Diseases like dengue, yellow fever, and malaria continue to kill almost a million people each year. But genetic modifications can eliminate the disease-carrying genes within mosquitoes. And some scientists have even gone so far as to suggest that using CRISPR, we should eliminate the mosquito entirely. But whether we're talking about mosquitoes or mammoths, genetically altering our environment carries a lot of risks. Science now has these powerful tools like CRISPR to play around with DNA, revising or reviving what we want at will. Any tool we use has the potential for good or for harm. Fire cooks food, gives off light, and keeps us warm, but it can also burn down a house or even kill. With genetic tools like CRISPR comes great power and great responsibility. When we hear stories like this, we want to dig deeper. If you're fascinated by what's happening around us and exploring the rest of the story, be sure to check out some of our other videos and subscribe so that you're always on top of what's coming next.